Hello, I'm Rick Langston. It's a pleasure to be on uh, His Word Live Ministry again, and I, uh, I've been over here a number of times, and I, always, I appreciate the ministry and, and appreciate the work that uh, David is doing on this ministry. I want to uh, read from script, Scripture to you from Reve the book of Revelation, chapter 12 today, and I'm going to read all 17 verses in this, uh, in this chapter. And the thought for a message today is going to be two great wonders in heaven. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. There appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to de devour her child as soon as it was born. She brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a great place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. Now, Jesus spoke about these days in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22. He called this the abomination of desolation, which, uh, of course, scatters the Jews during the tribulation period. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him with the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. When the dragon saw that he was cast in the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. The serpent was cast into the mouth uh, excuse me, and the serpent was cast out of his mouth, water is a flood, and the woman, uh, that the woman, um, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, Oliver Green called this a parenthetical chapter. What it does is divide the, the uh, tribulation into two halves. The great tribulation is, take, is to take place uh, this, and this is actually, uh, uh, what this is, it is actually a history of the, uh, of the war between Israel and between Satan. <coughs> And so, uh, and, uh, uh, in chapter 11, the events there made it possible for uh, Satan to move into Jerusalem, and that was the two witnesses that witnessed in, the, uh, in Jerusalem. And those two witnesses, some, uh, think, uh, some say it's Elijah and, uh, and Moses, and, and of course, uh, uh, it could be Elijah went to heaven without dying, of course, uh, uh, Moses had his own uh, uh, funeral before God. God is the one that buried him. And of course, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Elijah and Moses appeared 
uh, unto uh, appeared with Jesus and uh, James and uh, John and Peter were there to witness the great the transfiguration. So they were there with him. And so uh, uh, now in in chapter eleven, these two witnesses are put to death. That troubled the world, troubled Jerusalem. And of course, when they were put to death, there was a great party. And they, they people sent presents to one another because of them, because any they prophesied these years, anybody that opposed them or tried to harm them were put to death by the powers that God had given them. But now they were gone, they sent presents to one another, but after four and a half days, they stood up on their feet again, and then, uh, and then it caused great fear, and they sent it into heaven, and there says there was a great earthquake when this happened. Now, now uh, we see this first wonder in heaven. The first woman a wonder is a, a woman clothed with the sun. It says the moon is under her feet. On her head is a crown of 12 stars. And she's with child giving birth with pain. Now, this woman, of course, uh, represents Joseph's vision that he had. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 9 through 11. Remember, uh, he saw the sun and the moon and the stars. They all bowed down to him. And, and Jacob himself interpreted this as being him and his wife and, his, uh, and, and uh, Joseph's uh, 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 brothers. And so that, uh, so that was interpreted. And of course, that represents the nation of Israel. Jacob, was his name was changed to Israel, and out of his 12 children became the nation of Israel. So this of woman clothed with the sun, let's remember that this is Israel. And then, of course, it's, it says which she's with child, giving birth with pain. And, I, and uh, the, of course, the, the child is Christ. Christ is the child, and remember... Uh, uh, the persecuted started even before he was born. They had to flee into Egypt. Now there's another wonder in heaven that John sees, and it's a great red dragon. And of course, we recognize that right away as being Satan. And notice it says, heaven seven heads and, and ten horns. The seven he heads uh, uh, represent the seven hills that Rome is built upon. Or, and then, of course, the, the ten horns are the nations that will unite to bring him to power during the tribulation period. It said, and seven crowns upon his head. Now, his, his tail draws the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, the stars of heaven are the angels. And Satan, uh, he, he was the first to sin. It wasn't Adam. He sinned in heaven. He rebelled against God. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to, uh, he, he wanted to be worshipped like God. He, he wanted to uh, uh, sit on the throne in his glory. So he rebelled against God, and he drew one-third of the angels of heaven with him. They rebelled against God with him. Now, he, and so, uh, so, there, so they, uh, he, his tail draws these angels uh, uh, with them down to heaven. He's cast them down to earth. Now he cast them down to earth because they are following him. They are with him. And of course, they stand before the woman then who is ready to be delivered. Now remember, the, the woman uh, is Israel and the one that she's waiting to deliver is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And, so, and he says the reason for this is to devour her child as soon as it's born. <clears throat> now, if you go in, in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, remember Herod. He tried to kill the Lord Jesus Christ uh, shortly after he was born because uh, the people came from the east saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Now, if he was the king of the Jews, this was a threat to Herod. And of course, a uh, threat to Rome. He probably wouldn't as much cared about, didn't care as much about the threat uh, to uh, to Rome as it did to his reign uh, there in Israel. So uh, uh, the woman brings forth a man child, and it says he was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now this is speaking of the millennial kingdom when Christ will rule, 
and Christ will rule with a rod of iron. He will, and of course, during the during the millennial period, you know, a man will be born. Satan will not be able to tempt because he'll be bound for a thousand years during that time. He won't be able to tempt, uh, tempt mankind. But listen, the the sin nature is still in man. The sin nature will still be there. They'll be able to sin. And that's why Christ will rule with a rod of iron. He will put down anything that comes up during that time. He will be a king, a great king, that will rule all nations with a rod of iron. And then notice it says the child is caught up to heaven. Now that is future is what he's going to do. And the child is caught up to heaven and to his throne. Now the child that's caught up to heaven, of course, is, is the ascension of Christ. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, remember, after the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Christ ascended back into the heavens. He's there today, sitting on the right hand of God. He's our great high priest. When we come to God, we come through our great high priest. And, and what a privilege it has, we have to have a high priest in heaven that uh, has already lived this life. He has been tempted in every way that we do. He understands our sin. He understands and he's ready to forgive when we come to him. You know, and so notice uh, what happens. The woman flees to the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is where Israel spent 40 years. Remember when they came out of Egypt, they sinned at Kadesh Barnea, and they, God turned them back and they had to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness. During this time, it says the woman flees to the wilderness. And, they, and, and of course, this is the second half of the tribulation period has begun. She has a place there that's prepared of God. And it says they feed her for 1260 days, which of course is uh, the period of the great tribulation. And to feed means to nourish. And, you know, probably uh, God may feed him with manna again like he did before. I mean, God fed him for 40 years with manna. And God's surely able to do it again if that's his will. But Israel is going to have a special protection, the nation as a whole, during the tribulation period. God is going to protect her. Listen, uh, some people think God's through with, uh, uh, with Israel. But God's not through with Israel. God's got a plan for Israel. As a matter of fact, when Christ comes back to reign, he's going to reign from Jerusalem on the throne of David for the thousand years. So God, and of course, Israel will be there. Of course, we will be kings and priests of God, and we will rule with him over all the earth. Now, uh, uh, now we see that there's this great war against the dragon. Now, <clears throat> uh, the dragon, of course, is Satan. Right now, we recognize him as the prince of the power of the air. Now, when he sinned against God, he was cast out of God's presence. But he is still an angelic being. He can only come in God's presence by permission, as he did in the book of Job. He is still the prince of the power of the air. He has great power, but not near what God's power is. Now, he's cast out of God's presence right now. In the middle of the tribulation period, he's going to be cast out of the heavens itself. He's not going to be able to go back into the heavens like he does now, but he will have to set up him a place here on earth. At the end of the tribulation period, he will be cast into the bottomless pit. At the end, at the end of, the, uh, of the millennial kingdom, he will be cast into the lake of fire where he will live forever and ever. Now, his, his, his uh, dissension is gradual, but we see it taking place and the rest of it is going to take place just as sure as there is a God in heaven. Now, there's war against the dragon. It says, Michael and his angels fight. And the dragon and his angels fight. You know, uh, Michael has the dragon outnumbered three to one. And those angels have never sinned against God. And those angels are have great power. And when they fight, they will cast Satan out of heaven. He says the dragon and his angels fight. 
but they did not prevail. Neither was there a place in heaven for the dragon and his angels. The great deceiver, it says, and his angels are cast out into the earth. You know, uh, Isaiah chapter 14 talks about, uh, in verses 13 through 17, talks about Satan being cast down to the sides of the pits, and they that look upon him will look upon him daringly. Now, that has not already taken place. Some folks think it's already took place, but it will happen when God cast him in the bottom of the pit, or the angel of the Lord does, and then in the lake of fire, they will look narrowly on him because his great power will be diminished greatly. He shall be brought down. Now, this prophecy is to Babylon. So, I, most everybody recognizes that prophecy as Satan being cast out of heaven, but the actual prophecy is to Babylon. But in the Old Testament, we see that uh, prophecy may have a near, uh, uh, may be for nearby or close by, and it may be for the end time. And many times prophecy reaches on past that, and this prophecy passes, passes that, and it passes under the end time. Now, uh, the great dragon is cast out in the earth. Probably, of course, this is, starts the last half of the tribulation period. But now we hear a loud voice in heaven. God's going to finish things up. Three and a half years, he's going to finish things up. And he says, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God. I'm glad God's going to display his power. He's going to display his glory in the future. And we're going to see it. The saved is going to see it. The lost is going to see it. But the lost, it will be too late for them. They'll be cast into the lake of fire where they will live forever and ever. And the kingdom of our God and the power, it says in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. How much power does Christ have? He has just as much power as God the Father. He has just as much power as God the Son. And he ha well, he is God the Son, but he has just as much power as God the Holy Spirit. And the power of his Christ is going to be displayed in this last day. And the, it says, the accuser of the brethren is cast down. Who's the accuser? It's Satan. It, it's Satan. Uh, I, I remember the story about Martin Luther, a great German refer, reformer. And he said that Satan appeared in his office one day and that uh, uh, he was started to accuse him of all the things that he had done, all the sin that was passed in his life. And uh, he told Satan, he, he picked up his inkwell and told Satan, those things are under the blood, and he threw his inkwell at Satan. They say that uh, inkwell stained that place for a long time. But he, uh, I, I'm glad that if you're saved, your sins are under the blood. They're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a, what a powerful uh, sin remover the blood of Christ is because it will remove all the sin of all those that will come to him and he will, he will birth you into the kingdom of, of God. Now, he accused them before God day and night. Satan had a place in heaven, but right now, right now, but it's coming to an end. Now, notice how they overcome Satan in that day, overcomer, they overcome by the blood of the Lamb. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb. That's how we overcome. That's how people have overcome in the past is by the blood of the Lamb. And that's how uh, they'll overcome in the tribulation period by the blood of the Lamb. Now, it says by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. These people had received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they, that's how they overcome. And notice the third thing is they loved not their lives unto death. You know, uh, the tribulation period is going to be a great time of persecution. There's going to be many believers that will die during that time. Uh, the, in, in chapter 7, there will be 144,000 
uh, Israelites sealed from every tribe of Israel, 12,000 from every tribe. And they will go into the world preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Notice I said gospel of the kingdom. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. The disciples preached the gospel of the kingdom. Paul, uh, Paul was probably the first to preach the gospel of the grace of God. Now they preached the gospel of the kingdom in all the world. And there will be a great revival during that time. It will be preached both to Jew, both to Gentile. Whosoever will, it will be preached to them. And there will be a and there will be a great uh, reaping or a great harvest during the tribulation period, and they're pictured in the last part of chapter seven of Revelation. In chap, last part of chapter seven, you see those that are saved during the tribulation period. It's a great multitude that no man could number. And and uh, John asked, the angel, said, "Where do these come from?" It, uh, well, the angel asked him, "Where do these come from?" He said, "Well, you know, uh, you know, I don't know." He said, "These are those that have come out of." great tribulation and have made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. So it tells you where they come from. They come out of great tribulation. Many of them will die for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Many of them will suffer because you won't be able to buy and sell. And if you don't give allegiance to Satan, you can easily be put to death during that time. Now, or the Antichrist, excuse me. Now, it says, Rejoice ye heavens and those who dwell in them. Rejoice ye heavens, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe to them, because uh, for the devil has come down to you, it says, having great wrath. Can you imagine how angry Satan is going to be when he comes down to earth? His place in heaven has been lost. And you know who he's going to take it out on. He's going to take it out on God's people. Of course, the first he's going to try to take it out on will be Israel. He says, uh, Woe to the inhabitants of earth, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. Knowing he has but a short time. A short time. In other words, three and a half years is the short time that he has. Listen, uh, are you saved today? Are you saved? Uh, if you're not, let me tell you, you don't want to go through the tribulation period. The tri and, and of course, if the Lord was to come today and catch up the church, if you're not saved, you'd be left behind to go through this awful time. Now, notice the dragon's persecution of the woman. He sees that he's cast out of the earth. And he persecutes the woman, Israel. Now, the woman is given the wings of a great eagle and she flies into the wilderness. In other words, uh, that, that day has come when the great persecution of Israel takes place, the abomination of desolation, and they are fleeing to the wilderness. They're fleeing for the lives. You know, uh, Christ said, if you're on the, on the housetop, don't come down to get anything out of, out of your house, but flee. He said, flee, and they flee into the wilderness. And she is protected there for three and one half years. The great tribulation period. Now many of them won't make it. As a matter of fact, Zechariah tells us that two thirds of the, of the people of Israel will die during the tribulation period. There will be a time of great persecution against them. But as always, there's going to be a remnant that will be saved. Now, it says uh, she flies in the wilderness and the serpent persecutes the woman. She, the serpent opens his mouth and sends out a flood. Now this flood is probably armies. Antichrist is going to have a great army. I mean, when you control the whole world, you can have a big army, can't you? Uh, uh, people has, uh, I think North Korea recently said they had a, they had a million man army. Well, uh, uh, that the armies of that day will number a whole lot more. He will send armies against Israel, but God will somehow protect Israel for three and a half years as the serpent persecutes them with floods. Now, it says God opens the earth and the earth swallows up the flood. And we see that Israel during this time is protected of God. 
Not so much in the first half tribulation, but this last three and a half years of the tribulation period, she is protected. Now, because that she's protected, the dragon is wroth with the woman. And he went to make war. Notice God's protection in Ezekiel 38 and 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him and all his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. So God will uh, protect Israel during this time and he will uh, bring all these judgments against the armies of the Antichrist. Now the dragon wrought for the one went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God. Now who is the remnant of her seed that's keeping? The, it's the hundred forty-four thousand. Antichrist can't do anything with them. Why? Because they are protected of God. They're sealed. They're protected. He cannot reach them, and they go in the world preaching the gospel of the kingdom to all that will to all. And he says they have the they keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. I can imagine these uh, people, can't you? These preachers, they go and they preach. They're in, they have God's protection upon them. It's like a uh, hundred forty-four thousand little Pauls. You know, Paul. Uh, Paul was preached. Can you imagine what? Uh, of course, Paul suffered a lot. He suffered giving out the ministry, preaching the ministry. He suffered uh, greatly because of this, but uh, uh, but these hundred forty four thousand they won't suffer like Paul did. They will have God's protection, and it says, and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now these are probably tribulation saints, hundred forty four thousand preaching through the world that he goes and he persecutes them, and more than likely the con converts because we see that there's. A lot of people that's going to die during the tribulation period. Now let me ask you today, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Have you repented? Have you asked Him to forgive you of your sins and come into your life and save you? I'm glad that Christ will come in. He will save you. He's given that invitation to all. He says, whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Where is the water of life? It's in Jesus Christ. Let me ask you, friend, just to turn him today. Ask him to come into your heart. And God, and you will be surprised at the miracle that will take place in your life. God bless you in Jesus' name.